If you guys are looking for the absolute cheapest coins on the internet right now, head on over to my sponsor, AO. EAH.com. They got the cheapest coins on the market. You can get a million for under 50 bucks. Save that money. Make sure to always use code Poodle at checkout to get your additional 3% off. What's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys. And today we have the Saturday Legends. So that means we have two new LTDs, two new base legends, obviously, which are the same player, just LTD versus base. And of course, guys, some stuff regarding Team Diamond news and a few other things. But before we get into the video and go through everything, guys, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, turn that notification bell, give this video a big thumbs up as always. And of course, if you guys need coins head on down below to my new sponsor super cheap coins you can pick up you could probably do the damn marino set for super cheap using them I highly recommend make sure to always use code poodle though so you do get the extra discount especially when you buy in bulk it's just a big like the discounts when you buy in bulk it's just obviously gonna be more just more substantial right and you know if you buy five bucks worth the discount means nothing if you buy 200 bucks worth the discount means something right but yeah let's get into this guys so the legend solo should be in game make sure you guys are playing your legend solos getting your tokens and doing all that so the new legend so uh, solo should be in game i have to actually catch up with my legend solos i didn't have my xbox if you guys recall for about two weeks it was getting repaired so i just got it back a few days ago so i gotta start i'm catching back up with some other stuff i was playing my head to heads i'm really behind because of all that of course just like last year i always have some issue in the beginning of the year but um yeah, make sure you're playing your Legend Solos for John Mackey and Leroy Selman, who are the new ones. Super easy solos. You hop in, get a sack, and then just chew clock. John Mackey's pass for 25 yards. That's literally the easy, like literally one pass, and you could just chew clock after that. Unless you start, oh, you're down by eight. So actually, score, score again, and then chew, of course. They always do something like that. I love when they give me a lead and they say win the game because I can just chew clock the whole time. But that's going to be that for the Legend Solos. Make sure you guys are playing through. Because remember, you guys do get rewards uh, sporadically throughout the year. Let me go back, actually, real quick. And remember, you do want to be collecting your tokens for the end of the year boss legend. And not end of the year, like early, mid, mid, mid winter, early spring legend, whenever they end up releasing it. But remember, at this, you do get more strategy offense and strategy defense as you do go through. So make sure you are doing this. I imagine some of these are probably really, really good at some point. Uh, maybe the plus speeds and stuff. But it's about it for that. Let's head on over to these sets, of course. Also, guys, quick little news with the Team Diamond update. If you guys didn't know what happened last night, so initially, Dan Marino was capped. He had a market cap of about 2 million coins to be sold with, like with the new auction caps, which kind of sucked for a lot of people because if you got Dan Marino early, you probably could have sold them for like 3 million coins, but you had to sell them at 2 million, which kind of sucked because I feel like he's worth more than that. But now, because everyone's already selling them, everyone has, like it sucks for people who did it right away. You probably could have sold them for like 2.6 to 3 mil. But now that he's already get people are getting him, he's going for around 1.6, which I mean, honestly, I mean, it's expensive, but I guess considering what it takes to get him, that's not even that crazy because you figure every set costs about 200 K, right? Every uh, team, every team diamond set is going to cost you close to like 200 K or at least let's say 150 on average, 150 K times 32 is 4.8 million coins. Now, of course you can go sell them and stuff, but that's just, you need 4.8 million coins to even get him. So it's just, you know, money kind of makes money kind of a thing. I, I want to see if someone ends up tracking this set so we can go ahead. I want to see like how much it costs to do versus how much if he sold everything back at this point in time. I'm kind of just curious. I want to know how much does Dan Marino really cost? Like if you did all the sets, you pretty much get Dan Marino for free. Like I want to know how that works. Now in terms of Dan Marino, is he worth it? He doesn't get Gunslinger, which kind of upsets people, but he does get Hot Route Master and Set Feet Lead and all that other stuff. Uh, he's 96 overall quarterback powered up. I mean, going to be close to end game in terms of passing. I wish he was a little bit better. They should have given him Gunslinger. I mean, if they gave given him Gunslinger, guys, he would have been the ultimate QB, and it would have been really fun. But again, Gunslinger, I think, is more important than Hot Route Master, in my opinion. But the way I play, I mean, I'm not a big hot, I'm not a big hot route and guru. Now, if you are, that, that's where my opinion doesn't matter in terms of that. Like, it's very, it's very relative to what you how you play Madden. But guys, the set should be in game, and so should the new packs. Is it worth opening Legend Fantasy packs? Honestly, they've been kind of heat this year. But I never really recommend opening packs, guys. I mean, at the end of the day, you get a better value buying coins. We all know that. Um, you still get still an 85 plus topper, so still a pretty decent chance. Nothing really changed here. Probability of an 89 plus 5.2 percent, and 85 plus is a 57 percent. So pretty much every other pack you're pulling at least an 85 plus could go well. Could be 85s. You know how that goes, right? Now, moving on from that, guys, as we do go on through to sets and everything that should be out. Now let's go check out the. I want to go check out the player stats, kind of go through everything. Hopefully, they are up on the block already. We give it, we give it enough time. Um, of course, the names. The names are actually pretty known names. It's just a matter of positions that you get them at, right? Of course. Now, if you guys have been playing since, like, like I said, I've been playing since Madden 13. John Mackey was a Madden 13 beast back then. I remember there was, there was like three tight ends you had, right? There was, there was a John Mackey, the Dave Casper, and then was one more. I can't remember who it was. It was like those older legends that are like weren't as well known at the time. But John Mackey should be live. John Mackey used to be a beast back in the older men's. I, I, I feel like his, I'm pretty sure his card art used to be black and white. 88 speed, of course. 88 speed, right? Means he gets, he has an 88 speed. Like, that's crazy. 
that that's that's a really good speed right i mean not crazy but it's a good speed now the only thing that sucks about him is going to be the route running which kind of sucks because again guys like darren waller get higher speed and the route running thresholds catching wise is going to be a beast you know he has 88 speed 75 strength 92 catching 92 catching traffic 92 spec 87 short 88 medium route running and 75 run blocking very well rounded i don't think he's worth the pickup as an ltd i mean as, as he's not a meta player in my opinion six foot two 224 anything behind the car that does uh, stand out 90 stiff arm really good yeah that's what was always good about him back in the older maddens he was like a after the catch beast 89 juke so he'll have a 90 oh well no he'll have an 89 juke 91 carry 93 trucking he gets an 890 stiff arm he gets a 77 lead block which is decent uh he gets 93 break tackle 92 deep route running he's a really good deep route runner for some odd reason um usually the medium and short comes first and he has an 84 hit power which is just kind of absurd i mean i guess if you throw a pick and you you, you get it you click onto john Mackey, try to hit stick because there's a chance you could force a fumble after that which is just pretty crazy honestly but john Mackey's decent like i said i don't think he's worth it at that price point maybe you can get the base legend for a lot cheaper and maybe i'd go that route then we have leroy summon which is actually really good but he is a defensive tackle uh speed wise he has an 86 speed 92 excel which makes him like the best defensive tackle in the game by far like this actually is a meta card at defensive tackle now is it meta in terms of like you know you need him on your team not necessarily but if you if you use defensive tackles he's that meta to dt right he's faster than most ends and outside linebackers which is part of the reason why people don't use defensive tackles and that's because of that now if you could for whatever reason put him at end he'd be pretty crazy at end 86 speed 92 excel that's just absurd like that that's crazy at at uh defensive tackle and then next you have the 88 strength which is good 88 tackle 88 play rec 93 blocks 92 power move so he's a he's a threshold power uh power rusher he's a threshold block shedder he's super athletic six foot three 256 i wish the weight was a bit higher for dt i'm telling you maybe he may be a glitchy end if for whatever reason he plays well there he gets 91 stamina and then importantly too he gets 93 impact blocking he will go ahead and get 92 hit power. This card's really, really good. This Leroy Selman card is pretty insane for a defensive tackle, of course, right? It's all relative to his position. He's by far and away the best defensive tackle in the game. You set it and forget it for quite a while, actually, because a defensive tackle with above 90 block shedding, power moving, and close to 90 speed is going to be the best defensive tackle, or will compete as one of the best DTs for months. You can probably have him until Christmas, and he'll be, he'll be usable, right? So he's not bad. If you use defensive tackles, not a bad pickup. Now, do you want the LTD? Maybe you want to go with the base ones. Let's see what the base ones are going in price like relative to this of course so let's go check that out the base ones can we see them anywhere here i may have to filter this out yeah let's go filter this by defensive tackle we have warren sap and uh okay leroy selman's going for a little bit too much but he will come down because there's only one on the block right now i'd imagine these cards probably sit around um okay so 450 hopefully they sit in like the low 300 range at some point not right away but they will get down there of course they just dropped like nine minutes ago so give it some time but guys, that's about it for the video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn that noti bell. Give this video a big thumbs up as always. And let me know down below, who do you prefer? Like I said, for me, it's Leroy Selman. I think I'd rather have one of the other tight ends. Uh, Darren Waller. For, I think I'd even still rather just hold on to my... Like price-wise, like my Kyle Pitts will get the job done. He doesn't get the route running like Mackie. I'd rather the Waller though, or the or the Kittle. Mackie just doesn't get the route running for me. And if, and like the speed's 88 is good, but there's other tight ends with 88 speed that also get route running. But guys, better for the video. Enjoy the rest of your day. If you guys need coins, head on down below. You guys know the drill. Thank you for watching. I'm out. Peace.